Those are actually green. Um, they're made from recycled materials. Uh, in partnership with Siemens and the Ronald Reagan Building, Excellence in Government is committed to fostering environmental su sustainability and preventing waste. Uh, we've minimized the use of disposable products and all the leftover food, in case you're worried about those desserts out there, all the leftover food will be donated to the DC Central Kitchen. You'll find recycling bin, uh, bins for your uh, conference badges, uh, as well as other items around the conference area. What you will not find, uh, besides plastic water bottles, you also won't find a lot of unnecessary paper, including uh, evaluations. So we will, be, we will have these online, and we hope you will fill them out so we can uh, continue to improve this conference. And finally, I'd like to say events like this would not be possible without the support of our underwriters. And with us today at the impact level, we have J.D. Power and Associates, uh, Federal Long-Term Care, Monitor, and Sapient. And now uh, I'd like to introduce Judy Marks, the President and CEO of Siemens Government Technologies, who will say a few words. Thanks and good afternoon and on behalf of the 60,000 employees of Siemens here in the United States, we are just honored and privileged to be uh, part of this event and part of the innovation that's taking place each and every day in so many government agencies. You know, as we come to a close today with our two fantastic uh, keynotes to bring us home, uh, I can't help but think back as the day went on and where all of the sharing happened. And it wasn't always at this podium, it was in these side sessions where people had an opportunity to learn from each other. And that's what the spirit of innovation is all about. You know, we have a unique um, challenge and responsibility in our business of trying to serve healthcare, energy, and infrastructure needs of clients throughout the world in both the public sector and the commercial sector. And it just gives us a great honor to be able to serve our nation here and our nation's imperatives. What I'd ask you to consider when you think about industry in general is that we can be your partner. And we can be your partner in a transparent way, in a way that works with all of your acquisition processes. But we do want to be your partner. And as you look in the future and you think about opportunities to work together in a competitive spirit, I'd ask you to think about new business models in addition to new technical models and other methods of innovation. There are lots of ways we can innovate and we can lead. And one of those, we, we had an example that I'd like to share with you. You've heard a lot of stories up here on this podium today. I'll just leave you with one before we introduce our two closing speakers. Uh, we do have the, uh, late last year, we won a contract with the U.S. Army to provide the largest photovoltaic solar uh, installation in the nation at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. But it's not a traditional model. It is an innovative model. Where we're actually financing the entire contract through the application of performance contracting and through financing and in private industry. And the only way we get paid as Siemens is because we guaranteed the savings. We guaranteed those energy improvements, those energy efficiencies that will actually pay for both the installation and the operation and maintenance of that photovoltaic solar farm for 25 years. But what's even more interesting is we were able to take advantage of renewable solar tax credits that you as government leaders can't. But again, by partnering with industry, we're able to get 10,000 solar renewable energy credits uh, every year for the Army. We're able to qualify for a 30% federal cash grant and on a 300 basis point or three full percentage points, able to con contribute to the Army's uh, approach and they're, they're beating their goals for renewable, renewable power. So today, this afternoon, we're gonna close with two fantastic keynotes who really represent innovation and leadership and, and it's a privilege. I know they're gonna be introduced shortly, but Davida Vance Cooks of the government publishing office excuse me, the government printing office, I, I don't even say printing anymore because you've moved from, from print to digital and you've led that revolution and we really look forward to what you have to say. And then author Stephen Shapiro, who's gonna bring us, uh, bring us to a close today with a very unique look at leadership. So with that, let me turn it back over to our sponsors.
Thanks, Judy. We've talked a lot today about doing more with less, and uh, our next speaker knows a thing or two about that. Davida Vance Cooks is acting public printer for the US government printing office. When she took that position in January, she became, became the first woman to head GPO. But she has 30 years of experience in the private sector and in the federal government, and her work at GPO has included overseeing the award, the award of a $50 million contract for 2010 census materials. That's one of the largest contracts in GPO's history. Now, you may think you know what GPO does, but you might not know that it doesn't involves not just printing reports and books, but passport covers with computer chips, smart cards, and secure credentials. And odds are you aren't completely familiar with the full story of how the agency is transforming itself in the digital age. Davida is here to tell us that story, so please join me in welcoming her. Tom, thank you for the introduction, and good afternoon to all of you. I am delighted to be here today to discuss how the GPO is working towards modernizing and improving operations by using innovation to obtain more mission for the money, or quite simply, to do more with less. The GPO is in the midst of a transformation, and I sincerely believe that we have a good story to tell. Our agency can be viewed as one of many case studies within the government of how agencies are operating within an environment of tight budgets, intense congressional oversight, appropriate public scrutiny, volatile market conditions, and shifting employee demographics. All of these factors create what I call a perfect storm of reevaluation, and it requires an agency to reevaluate continually its mission and develop innovative strategies so that they can fulfill that mission. At the GPO, we view innovation as the introduction of new products and services, new methods, new business processes, and a new way of thinking about ourselves, our environment, and our customers. The framework of my remarks will include two sections. First, I would like to provide an overview of the GPO so that you know who we are and what we do. And then I will discuss several key innovative strategies that we have used and actually implemented to ensure a strong transformation of the GPO from a traditional print ink on paper to digital information platform. So what is the GPO? What do we do? Well, first of all, GPO was created by Congress in 1860 in March and opened nine months later on March 4th, 1861. By the way, that was the same day that Abraham Lincoln became the 16th president. So this agency is 151 years old, but it neither looks like nor operates like the GPO of yesterday. The GPO was created to keep America informed about the three branches of the government. In other words, the GPO records, prints, and makes available online the business of the government. Our primary customer is Congress. And we work three shifts, 24 by 7, when Congress is in session to support their information needs as they move through the legislation process. Our employees take pride in the fact that all of our congressional products are delivered on time. When we had Snowmageddon and the government was closed, we were open. When we had, of all things, an earthquake and the government was closed, we ran outside, watched the building shake a little bit, and went right back in. 
We have worked under so many circumstances, but we always deliver on time. We are the ones who produce the bills, the hearings, the committee reports, and the calendars. And every day that Congress is in session, we print and make available online the congressional record, which is the official record of the proceedings and debate of Congress. We don't just stop there. We also support the information product needs of federal agencies, many of whom are represented in this conference. We produce pamphlets, books, manuals, brochures, reports, maps, anything that requires putting information on a substrate or online. The scope of our support is so much larger than anything you can imagine, and the evidence of our impact can be seen on a daily basis. For example, I don't know how many of you are aware that we have produced the Social Security cards, the Medicare and Medicaid information, your census forms, your dreaded tax reforms, the military history accounts. If you go to a National Park Service and pick up those brochures, we printed them. And the list goes on and on. But we obtain economies of scale and save taxpayer dollars because we have a manufacturing facility supported by state-of-the-art information technology, which is located right down the street from the Capitol. And we procure information products and services from a number of printing vendors throughout the United States. GPO's print procurement program is one of the longest running government to private business ventures that we have ever seen in the federal government. Our database includes approximately 16,000 printing companies registered to do business with us. Most of them are small businesses with fewer than 20 employees. So we provide work and business for the printing and the information product community. We have 15 regional procurement offices throughout the United States. We have two warehouses for document distribution, one in Laurel, Maryland, one in Pueblo, Colorado. We also have a federal depository library partnership with over 1,200 depository libraries throughout the United States. Those libraries provide public access to federal information free of charge. We even have an online bookstore and we even have a brick and mortar bookstore. And I would love for you to come and visit our bookstore on Capitol Street. And while you were there, you can stop by and see our historical exhibit. But our present and our future are defined by digital technology. And digital technology has radically changed the way we carry out our mission today. This market dynamic has caused a major transformation for the GPO, and it requires innovative solutions. We have successfully transformed ourselves from a traditional ink-on-paper operation to a digital information platform for the federal government. The innovative byproduct of this transformation is our federal digital system, affectionately called FDSIS. In addition to creating and using digital databases to produce printed products, we upload them to the internet via FDSIS. FDSIS is a one-stop online site for authentic published federal information from all three branches of the government. It is a massive digital database that has approximately 680,000 federal titles available online from our GPO servers and our connection to the other servers from other agencies. And approximately 13.1 million documents are downloaded each month from FDSIS. In addition to providing 
an online digital database of congressional information. We create websites for agencies. We host websites for other government agencies. And we provide digital graphic design services. GPO is also in the secure credential business through the production of US passports for the Department of State. And also, we're heavily involved now in the smart card credential business for the federal agencies. We have partnered with the Department of State since 1920 to produce the US passports. Believe it or not, at one time, passports were actually conventionally printed products, ink on paper. Today, the US passport combines security precision printing and secure electronics. In 2005, GPO produced the first e-passport. It has a secure chip, an antenna array capable of biometric identification data. And when you combine that with the other security features which we developed, that document, that passport, is then transformed into a secure state-of-the-art credential. Last month, GPO achieved a major milestone by producing 75 million e-passports in our secure production facility. Our entry into the secure identification smart card market has been exciting, rewarding, and challenging. For example, we're the ones in 2009 who developed the, the inauguration law enforcement credential for the US Capitol Police. We're the ones who developed the trusted traveler card for the DHS Customs Border and Protection. And if you watched the Super Bowl, and I know you did, we even developed, we're the ones who developed a secure law enforcement credential for the FBI. It didn't get us in to the Super Bowl, but it worked. We are the only government facility capable of producing secure credentials meeting the HSPD-12 criteria. The GPO staff, let me tell you about them. They're a mixture of blue collar and white collar employees, and we are heavily unionized. At one point in time, the GPO had 8,500 employees. Today, we number 1,900. That is the lowest level in more than a century. We have three funding sources. Congressional Printing and Binding Fund is responsible for the congressional products, and we're only paid for what Congress asks us to print or to produce. The Federal Depository Library and Cataloging and Indexing Program is funded through the Salaries and Expense Appropriation. But we have a revolving fund which we must earn. It pays for everything else. And that essentially means that we have to operate like a business. And that means that we watch the bottom line. So as you can see, before I move to part two, the GPO is lean. It's a lean organization. It is involved in a number of different areas. And we have expanded our brand to include everything from traditional paper, ink on paper, to digital databases, to even secure credential businesses. Now, that you know who we are and what we do, you might ask, well, how did you use innovation to secure your mission? How did you use innovation to do more with less? Well, in order for the GPO to be of value and of service to our customers, we had to refocus transform, and provide more mission for the money. We developed a multi-pronged strategy to make sure that we got there. These strategies, which I will tell you about, may seem common to you because they are normal in a business world, but for the GPO, they were unique because they had never been done before, and as such, 
We consider them to be best practices, oops, not necessarily stupid, because of the fact that they worked. Our first innovative strategy was to change the way we think about ourselves by updating our mission statement and updating a five-year strategic plan. In fact, we never had a five-year strategic plan. We wrote one. We needed a roadmap for the changes that would be required to transform the GPO. And we needed to communicate that roadmap, period. We updated our mission statement to reflect the fact that we embrace change. We are not afraid of change. For years, our mission statement was to keep America informed, which was great and it was perfect for that time. But as you know, we are operating in an environment where change is here, change is coming, and if an agency wants to survive, it must recognize that it must change to meet employee and customer expectations. So our updated mission statement is to continue to transform ourselves into a digital information platform and a provider of secure credentials. I continually emphasize to my staff that this is the touchstone for decision making. And everything we do revolves around that. And yes, it is a new way of thinking. We developed a strategic plan for 2011 through 2015 to cover five years. Our goal was to determine where we want to be and how we're going to get there. But we decided instead of just putting it in a drawer and forgetting about it, and you know how you dust it off once a year? We decided that's not going to work for us. We decided to aggressively communicate the strategic plan. We posted it on our website. We highlighted components of the plan on our monitors that are distributed throughout the building. We put it in our weekly newsletter. We put it in our monthly newsletter. We talked about it in our town hall meetings. And at the end of fiscal year 11, we issued a document highlighting the accomplishments of our plan. Then when we closed out fiscal year 11, we updated the plan for 2012. So now it's 2012 through 2017. By the end of this week, we'll even post the mid-year updates to fiscal year 12. This roadmap, which we actively and publicly communicate, is an innovative approach for the GPO because we are holding ourselves accountable publicly for the transformation. Our second strategy, the one that I love the most, was to introduce a new method of communicating with our employees by embracing employee engagement feedback, and training. The result is that we have decided that you can never, ever over-communicate with your employees. If you have to communicate again and again, it's okay. We implemented an innovative approach so that the employees can communicate with me directly. And let me just say this to you, be ready for that. If you decide that you want to hear from your employees, be ready. They once they found out that they could send an email to me and it was anonymous, that was it. I have, as of today, I have over 590 comments and suggestions. And that started in mid-January. It has given the management team and myself a unique perspective on what's happening with our employees. It's important. We're making changes as a result of that. I'm especially pleased that for the first time, in our history. We're going to join with OPM in their survey process to be ranked as one of the best places to work. We want to hear what our employees have to say. This was unique for us because we approached them. We want to hear what our employees have to say. We also understand the need for training and we have aggressively pushed IDPs. We developed an innovative training program called LEAD for our employees so that, so that they could learn the skill sets to make them leaders. We've even participated in the fellows program. We also, with our third innovative strategy, decided to bring our costs under control. We offered a voluntary buyout to reduce staffing. 
Our target was 15% cut in budget, 15% cut in employees. One of the best things we ever did was to have a workforce plan. We required that our business unit heads each develop a business plan for their workforce to tell us what it would look like if they had to cut it by 15%. If there is any agency in this office that has to go through a buyout, I would encourage you to do that. Because once they did it, and we rolled up all of those workforce plans into one master plan, we were then able to go ahead and launch our buyout. And as a result, we dropped to 1,900 employees. That was due to the collaboration between management and labor and the workforce plan. Now don't forget, at that time we had about 2,300 employees. We held the line on salary increases consistent with what the president asked for. Then we made some tough and highly unpopular decisions, but the strategy eventually paid off. We restricted external hiring. We restricted travel. We restricted overtime. We canceled recruitment bonuses, retention bonuses. We even canceled student loan repayments. By the time we did all that, I was highly unpopular. But it worked. We implemented strict controls on credit card usage, controls on contractors, controls on our strategic investments. We even have a committee that's responsible for looking on strategic investments. But oh, did it work? It did. We're lean. We're mean. We have the savings generated from the buyout to put it into capital investments so that we can, in fact, create digital databases, which is what the client and the customer expects. Our last strategy is to create new products and services for our customers and to create added value by leveraging trusted relationships with our customers. We are now in the app market. We are the ones who launched the federal budget app for FY13. When we launched it, we thought we would get about 5,000 hits. We got 50,000 in 24 hours, 100,000 in one month. Our smart card market, we're there. We're investing in new technologies and equipment to become more efficient. Since a large part of our work is involved in creating digital databases, we now are trying to make that much more efficient, and we're updating that process. We're emphasizing our quality certifications as market differentiators. Our passport production facility is ISO 9001 compliant. Our plan operation recently achieved multiple quality certifications through ID Alliance, and it's considered a master printer. We're leveraging the capabilities of our FDSIS because we know that it represents the future. We have an advanced authentication system on top of FTSIS to give you digital strategic security. And we can tell you we're the only ones to certify those documents. So in summary, we're doing more with less, more innovation for your money. Our success in achieving these goals is because of our employees. They're passionate and they're proud of their agency the mission and the services that we provide. I'm proud to lead GPO during this time of transformation. And because it is the beginning of Public Service Recognition Week, I just want to say thank you to our employees for getting us from that traditional link on paper to the digital information platform. Thank you.